This is episode 121 of the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast. I'm Carly Cade, and today I'm speaking with Veronica Moore. Veronica, a Mustang Camp volunteer, has come on the show to share her adventures with fellow volunteer animal trainers from around the globe who teamed up to write a children's book about a baby burro. The team behind Peabody Gets Adopted originally met while training wild Mustangs in burros for the adoption program at Mustang Camp. Mustang Camp is a nonprofit organization that helps formerly wild animals transition to a life with people. It is operated by volunteers and students, placing 40 to 70 animals a year into private ownership. It works with the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, and rescue organizations. It is one of the 11 licensed equine rescues in New Mexico and is directed by Dr. Patricia Barlow Eyrick. Settle up for a conversation about how love for donkeys inspired an illustrator from France, a photographer from England, and writers in New York City and northern New Mexico to join forces to produce a book about animal adoption. Now, let's get into the interview. Welcome to the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast, a podcast featuring interviews with equestrian authors who love all things horses and writing about them. In each episode, you'll hear inspirational stories from horse book authors, including writing advice and marketing tips to help you write your very own horse book. If you're an author, aspire to be an author, or simply love horse books, then you are in the right place. I'm your host, Carly Cade, and creative writing makes my spurs jingle. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast. I'm Carly Cade, and today I'm excited to speak with Veronica Moore. Welcome to the show, Veronica. Hi, Carly. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Veronica, how have horses touched your life? Oh, my gosh. Well, my first horse, I was 12 years old, body score of one, blind in one eye, but that was that was my horse. And of course it touched my life. He was a rescue. My mom didn't think he'd survive the trailer ride, but he did. And he blossomed under my care and we had an amazing connection. I, I'm sure everybody says this, but we, we were telepathic and uh, it was a wonderful thing for a child, a great experience, sense of freedom, confidence, all of those things that it brings to you. And it sounds like your your first horse really set the stage for for what we're about to talk about today, which is awareness of adoption of animals. A lot of parents wouldn't want to go that route with a horse that needed to be nurtured back to health and be adopted. Like how how did all that happen? Set the table for for why your parents decided to do that for you. You know, that's an amazing question. My parents didn't really know much about horses. This was through my dad at work. He just, oh, I heard about this horse. He's going to go to the glue factory. He's only $50. And we we knew nothing. <laughs> and we just said, okay, let's do it. And it was a really an amazing experience. And from that, you know, you kind of grow. You step up and you learn. So there's that. <laughs> Absolutely. And and what, what was his name? Did you keep him in like a shed in your backyard or your garage? Or were you lucky enough to have a lot of land for him? <laughs> his name was Freckles and he was a beautiful strawberry Appaloosa horse. And it's really funny. Um, we, we just moved across the border from Nevada into the Sierra, Sierra County, like Calpine, small town area. And we had a house, but we didn't have land. No. So my mom asked this local farmer who had pasture and cows, hey, can my daughter keep her horse here? And the farmer said, uh, no. And, but, but the farmer's dog peed on my mom's leg, and he was so embarrassed. He said, yes, of course, no problem. So <laughs> I, I know it's a little crazy, but that's, that's what happened. My horse had a place to live, and it was a good thing. Well, that's the thing. Anytime there's a dream in the space, particularly around horses, there's you you figure it out, right? This and I I believe in in the universe kind of leads you to where you're supposed to be. So I think, you know, some sort of force led you to Freckles, which led you led you to the farmer, which the dog understood that this was important for for who you're going to be a, in the world. Pees on your mom's leg, and then suddenly you have a place to keep your horse. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's serendipitous, right? <laughs> it, it, it's a good intro. And I do believe, you know, if you you kind of throw rocks at an invisible bridge and see what happens and it and the, the walkway appears. So mm. absolutely, I, I believe in that. Oh, so, I love that. So. <laughs> So talk to us, you start your journey with horses and adopt adopted horse and you found a place to keep him, and, and he influenced your life. Talk to us about how this sets you on a path would have, which eventually led to the writing of your book. I'll try to consolidate that. I didn't have freckles for very long. He only mm. survived a season because he, he went completely blind and wrapped himself up in a fence. Mm. After that, I wound up riding the farmer's horse and we did, we did Gymkhana and barrels. We moved back to Nevada, took that horse with us and also a colt. And then th- life happens. Your parents get divorced, all that kind of thing. 30 years later, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm in, living in New York City. I'm doing my thing. I'm doing hospitality and other things. And I'm missing horses terribly. So I start volunteering at, at Flying Mains and Gallup, therapeutic riding places. And even that's not enough. So I like, I'm going to do horse massage. I do <laughs> equissage. That's cool. Do that. Start flying to Arizona from New York City and going to rescues and taking things in stride. I was also doing jewelry work. So I would walk the gem show in Arizona. That's kind of how that happened. But back to the book, back to that. I found a place called Mustang Camp online through Workaway. And they train horses with positive reinforcement Mm. to adopt them out to the public. So, you know, I'm not a spring chicken. So, you know, you don't, I'm not interested in pressure training or anything like that. And I thought, let me just try this. Let me see if they, what this is about. They probably won't even respond. And they wound up responding and saying, hey, come out for a week. We've got a spot. And I, I said, cool. And I came out. And she said, stay the whole summer. And, and, I, and I was hooked. And that's how this brought me to the book, learning to train through positive reinforcement, meeting donkeys, meeting mm-hmm. wild mustangs. That's amazing. Again, it's like kind of like the track that leads you to where you are today. And, and I, I feel you. My early career was in New York City, too. And the whole time I was there, I missed horses desperately. I sold my childhood horse to move there. It's it's so. it's not the same. I mean, even just city living in general, it's loud and it's not peaceful. And, you know, for me, the horses are peaceful. You don't, you know, it's wide open spaces. So this this experience, I mean, good on you for living in New York City. That, that that'll toughen anyone up. If you can do, if you can live there, you can do anything. That's that's what I think and truly believe. So good on you for that. But you found you followed your joy or your passion back into the horse world, and you got involved with organizations that um, use positive reinforcement to help adopt out animals in need, particularly horses in burrows. Talk to me about the wild. Wild donkeys. Can I call them that? Wild donkeys. Tell me about about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually burrow. The term burrow means it's a BLM or a wild one, and donkeys refers to domesticated, but they're interchangeable. Mm. But you can call it whatever you want. So donkeys. Wow. I go. To, I get to Mustang Camp, and I'm super excited. Like, yeah, Mustangs. Who cares about donkeys? Whatever. But I get I get paired up with donkeys and slowly but surely they they just steal your heart. They just do. You can't you can't help yourself. And you're like, oh, oh my goodness, what was I even thinking? I mean, I love horses, don't don't get me wrong, but there's an extra there's an extra dimension to burrows that I can't even verbalize right now. I don't know how to explain it. They're just special creatures. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk a little bit more more about that because I, I live in Arizona, so there are a lot of wild burrows here, and I a lot of people I know have adopted them, and they have them as companion animals for for other older horses and things like that. But I don't know a whole lot about interacting with with burrows, or or I mean, everyone I've ever met, they're adorable, and I want to pet them, and they're friendly, but uh, for the most part, right? But talk to us about what makes a burrow unique and and how it kind of is different from horses? Because I think I'm interested, but I think listeners would be really interested oh. in knowing more about this too. Well, here's how I kind of explain. Uh, they're, they're kind of shy. Uh, the way oh. that we train with positive reinforcement, they're going to, we empower the animal to approach 
us. Mm -hmm. So they get a sense of predictability and control and confidence. And, and that really works. But I think initially with the borough, they have like a seven to 10 second delay where <laughs> you have to really, you, you know, you're asking them something, Hey, can you, can you touch, can you target my hand? And you have to wait. You just kind of give them that seven to 10 seconds while they're thinking about it going, mm, do I trust this person? Is it worth it? Okay, I'll do it. And you have to kind of keep that in mind, like you develop your timing with burrows mm -hmm. because you can't just go, hey, 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 you know, how would how would you like it if I kind of said, hey, are you listening? <laughs> hey, can you do this? Yeah. Can you do this? You got to just just wait for it. So it turns into a conversation that way without a, being annoying is what I'll say. That's beautiful. I mean, it's a, it sounds like they're a lesson in patience. And I love that timing. Timing is everything. And every being has a different sense of timing. So being able to tune into that must have must have been so special and to realize that, okay, I have to slow myself down for this, for this animal. And I love the pictures that are over your shoulder, which are also the cover of your book. There's the cutest burrow looking directly at us. So talk to us. I mean, the, the burrows have obviously touched your heart. And thank you for sharing a little bit about what it's like to be with them. Tell us about Peabody Gets Adopted, please. I love the I love the cover of the book. Well, the illustrator, Aline Grandado, did these and we won a Equus Award. We won a Winnie Award for this for the children's illustrations. And so this is Peabody and his mom, Kayenta. And the summer that I was at Mustang Camp, it, it was the summer of baby donkeys. There were three. I mean, I first, I got there, I, I was partial trainer to Michael, but I had Pima, Paige, and then baby Powell, who's in the book. Mm -hmm. So the, the book is based on real animals. So I trained um, Paige with little Powell, and then they got adopted. And then, yeah, and then Peabody came along. Oh, my goodness. So uh, when I met Pal, Pal was like five or six months old. But when you see a little baby donkey running around using his legs within the first couple hours, you're just, that, that's it. You're done for. So <laughs> your so, heart has melted. So, so we're like, and, and there is a group of us there. We're like, the donkeys are so stinking cute look at all these animals isn't it great and there were so many little stories going on like I, I had to go and pick up the stallion Valoroso that was stealing hay from a campground and so he's in the book too <laughs> and there's a there's a zebra <laughs> at Mustang camp called Spot and he's in the book and it's kind of how they all interact and people that come by to look at the animals to adopt them so were you always, so this is like so special. So it's a, it's a story that's near and dear to your heart with real animals. It's raising awareness for adoption of animals. It shows your, showcases your love for the, the baby donkey or the baby burrow. Were you always a writer? Like where did the, were you like, or were you like, there, these are stories that are too excellent not to share. Like what, where was the inception point of being like, this has to be a book? The illustrator was there. And I'm not really a writer, but I just thought this is a cool story. This is a group effort. Um, so mm -hmm. it was Christine Eng. Um, there was a photographer, Jasna Ferlan, who has the real pictures in the back of the book. Patricia barlow Eirik, who runs Mustang Camp. She really is a writer and she arts the story and let us kind of contribute to all, put all these pieces together. For, the, for this book. But we all just kind of thought, why not? Let's just see if we can do this. And so I must say it was a group effort. Aww. And we all kind of worked off of each other. How fun. I mean, it, it, what, a, what a fun collaborative exercise and in, in bringing all the strengths of all the different people around Mustang Camp in support of writing a story about these animals and creating awareness for adoption. So so is the book, have you, are you leveraging the book to raise awareness for Mustang Camp? Like, is, is that, is that the message sort of running in the background with, with the story? Exactly. I mean, that is the idea. It was a fun project, but it's also um, all the proceeds from the book 
go go to Mustang camp. And it uh, raises awareness for positive reinforcement training, mm-hmm. adoption, all of those things. And and the raises the profile of Mustang camp too, which is let's see what happens. Why not? Yeah, let's talk a little bit more. And that's wonderful like the, that the proceeds from the book go to support the camp. I, I love hearing stories like that. Let's let's talk a little bit more about the camp. Like where's Mustang camp located? Uh, forgive me if I missed that, if you said that earlier. And, and, and you were led to it and they brought you and then you stayed for a summer. What, what, what are some of the roots of Mustang camp and, and what makes it special? Mustang camp is in New Mexico. It's deep in the Largo Canyon. It's a magical, magical place about three and a half hours from Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. And it's remote. It's beautiful. It's, it's a five-star resort for Mustangs and burros, not necessarily for people. It was an old school. So there's um, some buildings, but it has an amazing fencing structure to support between 20 and 60 animals. She has an incredible setup. That sounds like a really magical place. And horses need five-star resorts too. We're all beings in need of care. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the animals that, that are there and that are served, where do they come from all over the country? Are they just local to New Mexico? How do, how do the animals come in to work in the positive reinforcement space to be adopted out. Some are from gathers, some are nuisance pickups from uh, the New Mexico Livestock Board. Um, Currently, Pat's working with the Mesa Verde herd and that's going really well. So, and recently we, this is kind of a random thing, but she's taking on seven BLM burrows that were found in a SoCal feedlot that we're going to ship off to slaughter. So she's partnering with American Wild Horse Campaign to get them out there trained and then because they're unhandled and then adopted out. So it's lots of different groups that that she's working with, BLM as well. Mm -hmm. That's that's wonderful. I mean, just to make a contribution to animals' lives, but then train them, socialize them, use the positive reinforcement so then they can bring magic into another family's life or in find their forever home. I, I just, I, I love that. And I think I'm, I'm a big fan of adopting animals. I, I totally stand behind it. Talk to us about the message that you want readers to grasp when they've, when they've put down Peabody gets adopted. <laughs> <laughs> Donkeys are really, really cute. <laughs> adoption. <laughs> adoption is an amazing, amazing thing. And you're giving a home and a life to, to an animal that may not have that chance. And you're giving them a whole new life, a whole new, a whole new world. And doesn't every being deserve a second chance and an opportunity to be loved? And and thank you for the work that you're doing. What was your path to publishing? How, how did you, you all came together and you collaborated, you wanted to put the book together to have the proceeds go to supporting the camp. What did you decide to do when it came time to publish? Well, here's where Patricia comes in. Mm-hmm. And Pat is the founder of Mustang Camp, but she's also a writer. So Pat has written a book called How to Train from A to Z and also like a training manual for Mustangs and Burrows. This training manual is amazing. But anyway, so the publishing is all is all Pat's. So Pat has a publishing company, Little Wind Talks. So it was easy to get that rolling and to set up and, and what is it, an EIN number and register your book and, and do all those things. So lucky, lucky. You know, you had all the right pieces in the puzzle to getting a, a book going. You had a, a, a writer who had already gone through the process to help coach how to get this through. You had the illustrator, you had a photographer, you had a group of people that collaborate. So that's actually a great point. Like anytime you're starting on any journey with anything new, whether it's writing a book or even riding lessons or just learning about horses, you always tap into other people and learn from them because, you know, the path is so much easier when you have a team supporting you or you ask questions of people that can help along the journey. So it sounds like that was the le- that was one of the least painful paths to publishing that could possibly have happened for this book. <laughs> uh, absolutely, yeah. 
because you said, you know, that this is you know, your first kind of writing experience with the book, you didn't, you said you weren't really a writer. What has been the best part of, of that journey for you? But on the flip side, what's been the most challenging part of being someone who has a book in the world? Best part was doing it was, mm. was, it was a blast. And then seeing, seeing the book, right. In its finished form, because the illustrations are gorgeous. They're, they're just gorgeous. And I love Aline. And Aline approached me to attend Equus with the book because she, she couldn't, she's in Sweden and she was about to have a baby. And I promised her I would go. And, and the, the book won an award. We, we want a winning award. So that was really the best thing to be acknowledged, you know, have, have that collaborative work be acknowledged and, and win that award. And the challenging thing is, you know, getting your book out there, getting other, other people eyes on it, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, And, And reaching readers is, is one of the things that can be challenging, particularly when this is the, the first time around. Right. And, and that is also one of my questions. How, how have you been getting the word out about this book? Absolutely. Well, Facebook and social media, and I, did uh, get this book into the library in here in Arizona, which is great. Um, I would like to maybe try to get readings of the book or something. We are going to, Mustang Camp is going to be doing some events. Uh, we're going to the Mancos Borough Festival. So I will be bringing lots of Peabody Gets Adopted books there. You can get the book on Amazon and you can get it from mustangcamp.org as well. Aww. So, so yeah. Yeah. I, and I think you're hitting the nail on the head with the Borough Festival. I, I mean, places like that, I mean, that's like your built-in demographic right there and, and going to um, Equus and, and meeting the people there. I mean, what did you think of being with your community at the Equus Film Festival and meeting all the other people who are writing or creating about horses? What was that experience like? Oh my gosh, it, it was a blast. And we stayed at Rancho Murrieta. They also had live demos, which I attended a lot because I love that. Mm-hmm. But it, it, was, it was interesting meeting a lot of different people. And some of the authors even did demos, which was great. So it, it's not just a book fest, it's movies and art as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the beautiful thing about having written a book and, do, and doing the work that you're doing with animals is there's a whole community of people out there and a whole network to continuously be building who we all speak the same language and we all like to support each other. I mean, you know, look at what we're doing right here. This is a way to reach readers, but I am, I am your person because I understand that connection that you have with animals. And I'm also a believer in giving animals love in a home uh, if there's a, an adoption opportunity. So it's like, it's just fun when, when you've created something to, to be out in the community with other people who have created, and we all like to help each other and support each other, but the conversations are so rich. So thank you for sharing that with us. What advice would you give to someone who wants to achieve a big dream? Don't wait for the perfect alignment. Just mm-hmm. take that for, take that first step. I mean, go to your local horse club or if they have 4-H anywhere or whatever your step is to bring horses back into your life. I mean, there's got to be writers groups if you want to write. There's tons of horse and burrow groups out here. Just just take that step. Start talking to people. You know, it just leads you to leads you down the path. Oh, I love that. That's a great answer. Okay. So if I wanted to adopt a burrow, what do I, what do I need to know? What do I need to know that, I mean, the, the timing, right? I get that they, they're thinkers and they need a little extra time, but I'm, I've had horses the majority of my life. I want to bring a little burrow and, and bring him a family. What do I need to know if I was going to adopt a burrow? Well, that's great. I would say adopt a burrow from Mustang camp because <laughs> they're nice and they're well-trained mm-hmm. and Actually, Pat has developed a text uh, class for adopters. Hmm. So you could take that text class and she may even send a trainer your way and say, here's how you work with this animal. This is what this is what they know. And here's how to do some positive reinforcement and just spend time with them and love on your animal. And it's (laughs) and you're going to be delighted. So it's really about just 
creating that connection with the particular animal that that the universe wants you to be with. But let's let's bust some myths about burrows too, because I think they are the cutest things. Like I, uh, and there's many burrows, and there there's a little bit bigger ones. But um, I have neighbors. Uh, let's bust a myth. A myth. Are they really okay. loud? Do they bray all the time? It depends. It really does. It depends on feeding time. Are they older? Are they really shy? Mm-hmm. You you just you never know what you're gonna get. You might yeah. get an o- opera singer, or you might get <laughs> one that just kind of snuffles, you know, a little bit. Oh, snuffle would be cute. But you know, that yeah. again, that's a great point, right? You cannot put anything into a box, not people, not animals, not breeds, n- nothing. Like every every being has its own way of being, right? Its own personality. So, you know, just because it's a dog doesn't mean it's going to do the same thing that all dogs do or live into that you know, idea that we've created about it. So a burrow is a burrow in its own right. And however people have made conversation about what they do, that might not be accurate. That was a long-winded way to say, don't judge. (laughs) (laughs) Agree. Agree. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, I think they are so cute. I mean, just... The eyes of the illustrator put on Peabody there behind you, I mean, just melt my heart. Like looking, I mean, that cover is so powerful because you're looking at these kind eyes and you're like, who wouldn't want to bring him home? (laughs) (laughs) So uh, I'm always looking for inspiration. What is there anything, and this is inspiring in and of itself, but is there anything you've read or listened to or watched lately that has really inspired you? Well, right now I'm watching Shauna Koresh on Facebook, Equine Clicker 101 with, mm-hmm. with Jess, Jesse and her horse, um, Henley and Santiago. And she does like domestic clicker training and clicker training with like championship animals and all kinds. So it's interesting to see the riding part of clicker mm-hmm. training and what she's doing. So and she breaks it down so beautifully. I just, I just love it. Oh, that's fantastic! So. I actually had the had the pleasure of uh, meeting her at an American Horse Publications conference, and she actually uh, did a presentation one of the days where she brought one of her horses and and went through the clicker training and the steps, and it was just magical. And she's also an author who's written books. So see how amazingly connected the world sort of is. <laughs> what does creativity mean to you, Veronica? It's kind of everything. Not kind of, it is everything. It's how it's how you start your day. It's how you plan your day. It's like preparing yourself for what you're about to do. You're creating you're creating an atmosphere, a vibe about yourself and how you present to the world, how you present to your animal you know, how you set up the day for success. Mm. So um, that's in cooking, that's in training, that's in everything. Does that, does that make sense? That makes total sense. I feel like what you're talking about is just being present in your body. And that gives you the ability to create, right? Like everything that we do is a creation. But if you're not aware of it, it's just autopilot, right? Does that, is that sort of what you're talking about? absolutely and it's also the mental preparation in your Mm. mind okay like what what is going to happen today how would I like it to go and then being able to improvise if it doesn't go your way because your attitude is 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 good and that's a that's a creative choice that's (laughs) that's it in a nutshell I mean being curious about the next step in your life the next step with training with these donkeys that I'm working with that I'm totally crazy about like how can how can I support them what's going to make them successful you know I love that way of looking at creativity I mean it that really is like every step I take how I set up my day how I be with the animals how I cook my food is an act of being creative I I that's a beautiful answer thank you for that and and then what are you curious about? I mean, what's next? You're working with these awesome animals. You're living the dream uh, that pulled you out of New York City back into what you love. You've now written a book. You're building a network uh, with your readers and your community of other authors. What's next? Is there a follow-up book? 
Ooh, well, I am going to Mustang camp. Yay! <laughs> so there might be. We are, you know, fluffing up the uh, Mesa Verde horses to get them ready for pictures to be adopted out. So they have to have gorgeous pictures, right? So everyone, so they'll get adopted like that. So maybe there's a book there. I'm learning how to trim hooves. I've, I've joined the progressive hook care practitioners and I'm attending clinics. So I'm learning how to do the training and, and the trimming to make that animal's first experience a positive one mm. with a, with a farrier. Um, I'm learning how to pack donkeys. Now I got pack saddles for, for my kids and they're accepting them quite well. So that's, that is the next step. And eventually hopefully getting property somewhere and creating my own satellite training, adopting place. That's, oh. that's the plan. I love that big, big <laughs> dreams. And I'm already envisioning the next book. Maybe it isn't Peabody because he's been adopted, but it's like somebody gets a photo shoot, you know, that starts <laughs> like it's this photo shoot. And then you, you follow him through the, he's nervous about the photo shoot. And then you oh. Oh. Up and then all of a sudden he sees his picture and he's like oh wow I'm beautiful and he has confidence and then he has the confidence to meet his future family and all because of this photo shoot he went from like the ugly duckling to realizing he's he's really quite handsome um that could be fun <laughs> yes yes I like that <laughs> maybe that gets some creative juices going it's always yes. fun to brainstorm <laughs> Veronica, is there anything I didn't ask that I should have? Is there anything you want to share that that is really exciting? I want to let you know that the founder of Mustang Camp, Patricia Barlow Irick, is going to be profiled in Western Horseman Magazine coming in fall. It's super exciting. It's an, and it's a big deal. Oh, so wow. I got to mention that. Yeah, Western <laughs> Horseman is a. a great magazine. It's a beautiful magazine. I've so enjoyed spending time with you and learning more about you. Thank you for reaching out about the podcast. Can you let listeners know where they can find out more information about you, the book and Mustang Camp? Mustang Camp has a website. It's mustangcamp.org or you can go to magicmustangtamer.com. That's the Mustang Camp info. How to reach me. Um, I'm on Facebook as Veronica Moore. I'm on Instagram at Veronica Moore Inspiration. I, I post videos up there and stuff. You'll you'll laugh. <laughs> you'll see you'll see my fuzzy donkeys, uh, Rico and Pooh Bear. That's wonderful. And uh, Veronica was so kind. She shared p lovely pictures of her and her donkeys. And I will make sure to put all the links in the show notes so you can get to Veronica Mustang Camp and the book. But Thank you so much for the gift of your time. I have had such a pleasure speaking with you today. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me. I had a blast talking <laughs> with you. Thanks for joining us this week on the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast. I hope you enjoy these Q&A sessions with wonderful equine authors who love all things horses and writing, just like me. Visit my website, carlycadecreative.com, where you can read the show notes and make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you so much for your support. Want a free guide to secrets of horse book authors? Gallop over to carlycadecreative.com forward slash wisdom to have author advice delivered instantly to your inbox. If you are an author who writes about horses and would like to be spotlighted, please let me know. Visit my contact page at carlycadecreative.com to fill out a request. I'd be happy to have you on the show too. Thank you for tuning in to the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast. See you next time. I'm your host, Carly Cade. Creative writing makes my spurs jingle. <laughs>